not quite a year, and it really doesn't even feel like that long since we took a look at Squad. It was the second of these tactical hardcore FPS titles that I looked at, the first being Hell Let Loose. Well, since we last visited its dusty climbs, the devs have been hard at work and indeed managed to do something that seems almost remarkable for any early access title, and that's actually release Squad 1.0. So, out of beta and into the bright sunshine of a released game, let's ask, Squad 1.0, is it worth playing? The core of these games, no matter how often they're referred to as tactical FPSs, is teamwork and coordination. If you're looking for a mindless 30 minutes of fragging before bed, or sitting on a hill, lone sniping enemies, then look at any other number of options. Squad isn't that game, and it doesn't want to be. Squad, as the name suggests, is about working together with others in sometimes hugely pressured conditions and still performing, still doing your best for your colleagues as they would do for you. You'll see from the gameplay that yes, there is combined arms combat, and yes, there are moments of quite astonishing adrenaline and excitement, but no, to be effective in this world is to work as a team. Some might not like that cog in a big machine feeling, and that's fine. Arguably, you have to be in the right mood to play games such as this, but it soon becomes clear that those quasher moments, perhaps you're defending a base that didn't get attacked as the commander thought it might, maybe you're on board a truck moving around the map, the camaraderie and laughs that happen along the way become as much a part of the attraction of the game as the actual combat is. And just a quick aside to say, if you are enjoying this video, please do tap the thumb up button. It helps me out with YouTube and discoverability and all stuff like that. And if you tap that subscribe button as well, then that really is appreciated also. Thank you. The matches have different modes, capturing territory or bases or attack and defend and so on. So it becomes a game about logistics, placing spawn points in useful areas so that people can jump back in and continue the fight. Environments are varied, 20 maps in total, emulating historical and theoretical conflict locations around the globe. Forests, open deserts, towns and cities of varying styles are all represented and all play appealingly differently. It isn't just infantry work though. You can opt to become a crewman of a wide variety of vehicles, trucks, some other armoured personnel carriers all the way up to main battle tanks, or even take to the skies as a pilot of a helicopter and help ferry troops and supplies around the battlefield to aid your side. As I've mentioned with these games, teamwork and coordination is everything. You can imagine how much of that experience lives and dies on finding good people to play with. To that end, I've tended to stick to clan servers and then just favourite the ones that appeal the most. And that is, with community members who act in good leadership roles, such as commander and squad lead positions. This way I know that the server will tend to be filled with people playing the right way. Again, people looking to lone wolf or simply don't want to help out and play their role can be shown the door with minimal fuss. People want back from others the same effort that they're putting in themselves. It's totally okay if you're not in mood for that sort of gameplay. It's really not a criticism. But when you have a bit more free time, perhaps than the weekends, and you want to experience a rewarding side to gaming that you've probably not had before, then Squad is a superb doorway into that tactical FPS world. On the gunplay side, the weapons feel heavy and powerful to use. The animation while moving, reloading, the recoil when firing, and of course the audio are all well modelled and feel authentic. But part of that feeling of projected power is the really quite superb implementation of suppression in Squad. Unlike other more mainstream FPS games, in Squad there's real value in returning fire even if it's not completely accurate. Simply firing near enemies will suppress them, darken and shake their screen, and make it difficult for them to maintain effective fire onto you. So if you have contact with the enemy, Calling out to your squad mates, I think it's northeast in that tree line, and although that's not an exact location, it can mean that they can all fire in that rough direction, and you can put pressure back upon those people who attacked you. It's a much more realistic system than new players might be used to from other titles, but it really feels like an authentic portrayal of how things work in real life. Summing up all the new content since we last looked at Squad would be a laundry list of changes and probably add another 30 minutes to this video to be honest. I'll link their news page from their website in the description below if you do want that comprehensive rundown though. Know that the updates have rolled out at a pretty impressive cadence, even during the, let's say, somewhat distracting 2020 that we're having, and have all focused on deepening the experience of playing the game. The commander role was new the last time we laced up our boots and squad, but now it feels like it's been in the game forever to be honest. 
It's a pivotal role that can bind together disparate squads and have them operate as a whole, rather than just a bunch of people guessing about what the big picture might be. It's also interesting as a normal infantryman to have no direct knowledge of that command structure above your head, and that's all taking place. Your actual squad's orders are relayed to you by your squad lead, and it's almost comforting to know that there are people trying to deploy some sort of larger plan at a larger level. Tuning to gameplay mechanics such as, say, stamina, have happened during development too. It's not just been something where they've implemented a new feature and then just left it as it was first added, there's been progressive iteration. The headline bullet points for the 1.0 patch are the release of 100 player 50 versus 50 servers, the addition of a new urban map, Fallujah, and the inclusion of yet another military faction, this one called the Middle Eastern Alliance. These factions change depending on the map that you're playing, but it goes deeper than a simple cosmetic reskin. If, for example, you're playing as the Canadian Armed Forces, then their kit, the guns they use, the vehicles they have at their disposal, all changes to reflect reality. It's when you consider that there are eight factions in total, each with their own weapons, vehicles and visual designs, it gives you an idea of how much effort and singular vision squad has had and actually maintained over the years. You can't help thinking that if this were a more mainstream title with a AAA budget, then that sort of attention into these sort of areas would have probably been lost. If you're listing squads many strengths, then visuals and general graphics probably wouldn't be that close to the top of the list. Now don't get me wrong, there's nothing really wrong here, it's just that other facets of the game reach so high that the visual side feels perhaps not quite as prominent. There's a sense though that, say with a title like Hell Let Loose, that cinematic visuals are a real fundamental importance to that game. It should look and feel like the movies and TV shows that are famously about that historical time. For Squad, the visuals have a sort of rawness that suits the way that we see more modern conflicts. It's closer to helmet cam footage, or troops on the ground, rather than cinematic grandeur that fills our minds from films about yesteryear. It is worth pointing out some visual elements that do detract somewhat though, and they are actually something that I mentioned previously about Squad's sister title, Postscriptum. Some of the maps lack set dressing inside the buildings, that's tables, beds, TVs and so on. And now that might seem like a minor thing, but the lack of these gives the space that you're actually in an unreal or kind of film set fakeness to it. And when other assets of the game like audio are set such a high bar, it's the lack of those sort of details that do detract from the overall experience of the game. I mentioned a theoretical list of squad strengths a second ago. Well, we arrive at one such strength that would be vying for that top spot, and that's audio. If there's one thing to really pull you into the experience of playing squad, it's the sound design. The dynamic range from the quietest gust of wind to the calamitous thunder of artillery is perhaps the widest of any game that I can recall. This proper separation and scale of audio is often missing in more mainstream AAA titles. Your tough guy voice callout is functionally the same volume as someone firing a gun right next to you. And then again, that might seem like a minor thing, but it really lessens the effect of dramatic things happening. In short, Loud things should sound loud in comparison to quiet things. When it all becomes one level, then drama and immersion is really lost. The squad really seems to relish that audio separation and scale. Explosions and firing weapons occupy all of your audio capacity. They are loud in the world and drown out almost all other sounds. Someone might be talking on the radio to you, but if there's a tank firing next to you, then you simply won't hear what they're saying. It's exactly as you would want it to be in a Milsim style tactical FPS game. I'd recommend a decent set of hi-fi headphones to really appreciate the depth and at times terrifying grandeur that Squad's audio is capable of. And actually, I'm going to be quiet for a few seconds and I'll play you a few clips at normal volume so you can get an impression of what I'm trying to talk about.
If you're looking for customization, well, in short, apart from being able to select what role and what weapon you use, then there aren't any options deeper than that. Does it feel missing? Not really, especially not when you're in a match. This isn't a sort of game about personal expression or having cool tattoos or emotes, as you might guess. Just perhaps, though, it feels like it segues into another side of gaming in 2020 that isn't here as well, and that's progression. In short, there's no structured progression inside Squad either, and like customization, while you're playing, it doesn't really feel that missing. But this is 2020, people are used to having some sort of ladder to climb, even if it's just an account level that goes up as you play. I know that some people will say, this isn't a battle pass sort of game, and I agree, that would feel completely out of place in Squad. But at the moment, there's no real way to tell new players from experienced ones. Having something to differentiate those groups might be of value and help the health of the game as a whole. In 1.0, they added some desert camouflage paint options for early Kickstarter backers. So I'd hope in time that that sort of light customization that's in keeping with the realism that the game strives for might be included in future updates. I'm playing on what might be described as an old machine. We're not quite talking about coal and steam powered, but you know, pretty close. I have an old i7 and a 970 GPU. And I find it playable at 1080p, given that this isn't a Twitch shooter where 100 plus FPS would be expected. Some maps are better than others for performance. And generally, the newer the map, the less iteration it's had to improve performance. So that new Fallujah map doesn't run that terrifically for me. But again, it doesn't stop me playing and enjoying my time. The game modes as well seem to have an effect on performance as a sort of byproduct. In something like those attack and defend modes, it's a bit like rush mode from the Battlefield games. Well, they tend to focus the server population in quite a small area of the map. And I'm guessing that player density places significant CPU loads for network prediction and animation syncing and all those other things that need to happen in modern FPS games. So with a hundred players, it pushes machines like mine. It's a little bit beyond their comfort zone. For a game that first became known in 2015, its launch in 2020 seemingly couldn't have gone much better. Player numbers from Squad have always been pretty decent. It's seemingly the most active and populated of the tactical hardcore FPS titles. But with the release of 1.0, those numbers have peaked at an all time high of 15,000 players. And even a couple of days past that peak now, we're still getting almost 13,000 concurrent players each day. That's certainly good for the funding of the game, but I must admit being a little worried about that level of influx of new players and there being enough seasoned veterans around to take leadership roles and teach people how to play. If you're in a squad with all new players, then your experience is probably not going to be that terrific. You're probably going to have to run a lot, you're probably going to die a lot, and you're probably going to get pretty frustrated. So if you are someone who's played squad for years, then I'd certainly encourage you to step up and show this influx of new recruits how to get the best out of this game. So, is it worth playing? If you like the idea of teamwork over fragging, doing your best alongside people you've only just met in the most arduous of situations, experiencing some of the best FPS audio in gaming, then yes, I'd say it's very much worth playing. Know that this isn't a COD or a Battlefield style game. Approach it without preconceptions of getting multiple frags per match, because sometimes it just doesn't shake out like that. Maybe you're driving trucks, maybe you're a medic picking people up, maybe you're crew in a helicopter. Know that frags are not the gauge of fun inside of Squad. Even though this game is now 1.0, there are still some rough edges. Of particular note is the rubber banding and jerky motion of flying vehicles compared to land vehicles. But there's also other collision oddness and graphical edges that you might see in smoke or other effects. In other titles from big publishers, you might see a bit more of a push to round over these rough edges, focus on smoothing things out. But then, like I said before when we were discussing the factions, it's a real feeling that the efforts and focus that are being apportioned by this dev team actually created something with a more singular vision, that a larger publisher with a larger budget might have actually wanted something with a bit more mass market appeal, and then that really wouldn't be squad. I'm not saying that there does need to be improvement, that helicopter movement should be a priority in my opinion. But when given a choice between a more niche title that knows what it's good at, but comes with some rough edges, well then I'll still pick that niche title every time. Squad is on Steam for £32.50, 
and before it was released 1.0, it was regularly in Steam sales. The devs have posted an update to their roadmap as well, laying out future editions past 1.0. Amongst the new content for November, some new vehicles and new weapons for the Insurgency side, are helicopter improvements listed under gameplay, so I hope that that rubber banding will be a thing of the past pretty soon. But that roadmap doesn't just look at November. December also has a new map, Black Coast, listed alongside a new US Marine Corps faction and three new vehicles for the GP faction. Into 2021, we see future plans for at least two more maps, two more factions and a host of other improvements and new additions, such as fast rope deployment from helicopters and so on. 1.0 doesn't feel like the finish line for squad. And although I'm sure it was a huge amount of work in the last five years, but with future plans that they're laying out, it's clear that they want to keep building on this game's strengths for a significant time to come. Have you played Squad? Have you played other tactical shooters, say like Hell Let Loose? I'm really interested in your thoughts and powerful opinions, so please leave a comment below right now, and like always, I'll be reading every single one of them. If you did enjoy this video, then please tap the subscribe button now. It helps me grow the channel and keep making videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that thumb up, maybe even tweet or post about it on Reddit if you feel so inclined. I really do appreciate all that support. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Take care.